This is my new camera I had for Christmas, which is a bit more appropriate. What are we going to do today? Well, I've done the brake discs and we've still got the servo assisted drum system, single circuit braking system here. That's not ideal. Um, some people say you can use it. Um, some people say you can't because the rear drums will lock before the front discs are even half on. Some say, okay, well you can put a pressure, um, or like a pop pressure pop-off valve, I think about 10, 12 pounds per square inch, you'll have to check that, in the line to the rear brakes, and that will balance it up a bit. Because um, you don't want the brakes to lock at the back before the discs come on fully in an emergency stop, because you may just spin round. So, also, single circuit brakes do make me a bit nervous. I wouldn't, a younger me probably wouldn't have bothered, but um, dual circuit bit more uh, just uh, I don't know it makes me a bit more uh, relaxed so um, you go online you look for an aftermarket kit for a C body for a, a boosted dual circuit system and um, there don't seem to be many advertised it's as if C bodies don't really get much love in the aftermarket parts department so um, I've done an awful lot of searching around and what I've got is this um, there's variations on this available, they're all pretty similar. Um, it's an 8 inch dual diaphragm, not single, booster. That means instead of it being like a wide dinner plate, it's, um, it's about 8 inches in diameter, which is actually, so it's deeper than the old one, but its diameter is the same or actually maybe slightly less. So the next thing is, uh, what are we going to bolt to the front of this booster. What's going to go on here? It's going to be our dual master cylinder reservoir. So what have we got for that? Um, this is unbelievably huge cast um, dual circuit system. It's got outlets both sides so you block these two off in my case and we would do use these two um, and then this end bolts to the booster. Right, to save you the pain the left side is 5 eighths, that's the nut, and the end of the bolt is 3 quarters. These four nuts, and there's one there with a socket on it, if you can see that, there's one there, then there's two at the top. They are um, half inch pedal disconnected, four nuts taken off, which are down here. So in theory the whole thing should just pull out now from the uh, bulkhead. I've disconnected the brake line here, so in theory I've disconnected the vacuum hose. So in theory if I give this a good pull it should all come off. Surely it can't be this easy. Uh, look at that! <sighs> Next thing I'm going to do is uh, remove this plate, which seems to be just held on with these two nuts. Okay, I've shortened this push rod uh, a tiny bit, uh, as much as I can reasonably go. So when this uh, is screwed up all the way and the lock nut's done up, this it's right up the lock nut is against this uh, rubber boot um, I've taken off this much I don't know it's about nine mil so you can see that even with this uh, threaded rod shortened as far as I can get it to go. Um, this this linkage still projects a little bit back behind where the bulkhead would be because the bulkhead will be there. So you still need a tiny cutout, it seems to me, in the bulkhead here to just take take that. So the next thing I'm going to do is um, bolt this in. Uh, this is clearly too long, um, so I'm going to match it up against the pedal, the hole in the pedal shaft and um, mark it here where the new hole needs to be. I'll probably cut it and shorten it and weld it but um, at least it gives me a reference point. I bolted this in temporarily. 
you know, the rod that connects to the pedal went through the hole. Um, I jammed the pedal up against the um, brake light switch. So it's at the uppermost point of its travel. And then I um, marked through the hole in the, in the pedal arm the point on the, uh, the rod where I've got to drill my new hole. This scratch here, this circle that's been scratched on, that's where the pedal arm comes down and that's where the hole is. So I need to shorten this link by uh, this distance from there to there. This distance, centre of this hole, centre of this scratched mark, this is how much I've got to shorten this by. Now we'll, we'll cut along this line and then we'll weld the two halves back together. So this is the general idea, we'll uh, weld the two halves together and then we'll put a strengthening rib on each side. It's not particularly pretty but um, it's super strong, I don't think that's going to snap. Ok, I need to make up a brake pipe, um, so we've got some brake pipe which is uh, 3 sixteenths. Um, Got this brake pipe flaring tool which I've not used before. Uh, these are uh, 10 mil there, and this which screws in needs uh, a 5 8 imperial spanner. I've got a mini tube cutter uh, which rolls around and cuts the tube neatly, and some grease which you use on the end of this tool. The first thing is you shove this on, uh, you do these up hand tight, you screw this bolt in which acts as a backstop for the brake pipe um, and then you do these up really tight and that now grips the tube and then you take this out one hand. Yeah, and that, then you put in um, what's it called uh, QP1 there's this QP1 written there this side goes in first you put a tiny blob of grease on the tip there we are, and then you screw it in tight. To uh, right, so you take it all the way in until the nut butts up against this. Then you take it out, flip this round, and do it again, and it should produce a double flare, which is a kind of looks like that at the end of the tube. There you go. So I've just swapped it and done pushed it in this way now, done it up tight. So we'll take it all apart and we'll see what we've got in terms of a flare on the end of that. There we are. That's not too bad. Um, as brake pipe flaring tools go, that's one of the easier ones I've used and also you can do it um, on pipes in the car if you needed to. Right, this is now um, bolted on properly. Um, it was a bit of a nightmare to get the four bolts done up. Um, I had to put uh, vice grips onto the nut on the inside of the footwell, um, clamp the vice grips with, with a tie wrap to the steering column and then slowly rotate these bolts until they were done up tight. I don't know if you can see up there. We've got, um, you can see the, the pedal comes up and it hits the brake uh, switch that puts the brake lights on. Um, and it does actually depress as it should and come back as it should. So the next step is to mount our dual reservoir here um, it should be bench bled before you attach it. A couple of things to notice about this master cylinder. First is um, you get two blanking plugs with it um, because you can fit it presumably into left or right hand drive cars. So these these just block these two ports here, um, leaving these two as our usable ones. The other thing to remember is this spacer piece. So these are a uh, recess this side, it's flat this side. Actually goes in there. See that? And the distance, when it's all bolted up, the distance between the tip of this recess and this pin here, here, the end of the booster, should be, I think it's 0.02 of an inch, it's about, maybe about three millimeters. Um, this is actually can be adjusted in or out. There's a lock nut on it, um, but I've I've measured it all, um, 
I've done the maths and actually the gap is about three millimeters so I'm hoping it's been set up right um, when I bought the kit. To bench bleed the brakes you push these little um, connectors in here they're just pushed in um, you loop your tubes around through a holder which I've had to modify and just tape it in place and then you you push this um, about 12 times fill these with liquid with brake fluid um, until all the bubbles are pushed out of the master cylinder you, you clamp these off leaving these wedged in at the bottom um, and put the lid back on and then put the whole thing back in the car so I'm, I'm slowly getting this in um, we've got the rear brake line attached here we've got the two front ones looped to de-stress them uh, one under there one there um, I think these are made of steel which means they don't bend very easily so I got that one in and then found the one that was supplied here was too long top tip um, Put your fittings on if you're using if you're making a short link uh, put your fittings on first so you can slide them all the way up that way to put this flare on and then all the way that way to put this flare on if you if you put the bend in first you can't get these out of the way enough to get it through the flaring tool the correct length well it actually took me three attempts to get this the right length um, otherwise I was overstressing this one. I've got it all um, installed. I bled the brakes um, the old-fashioned way with a, a reservoir attached to each bleed port and just pumping the uh, master cylinder. I did make a little mistake. Um, this proportioning valve um, has a shuttle inside it which um, will move if there's a leak in one circuit and block it off. Um, you're meant to actually lock it in position before you bleed the brakes, but in fact it's not been triggered. Um, if it's been triggered, I believe this little this little thing here pops out or pops in, so you can see if it's uh, been triggered. I've actually got a spare one here. Um, this is the sender. So if the shuttle valve moves, um, this shorts to ground and puts on a, a warning light. Uh, so if we use a uh, what's that five eighth socket, this comes out. I don't know if you can see in there. There's a little tiny uh, recess, if you like, narrow part in the shuttle. So if the shuttle moves this way or this way, um, a raised edge will contact this and um, short it to ground. Um, so when you bleed the brakes, what you're supposed to do is you get a um, a device made of plastic like nylon or aluminium that's uh, that kind of shape and you screw it in here and the projection on the end locks the shuttle so that when you're bleeding the brakes it can't flick one way or the other um, now as I say I managed to get away with it but that's what you're supposed to do when you breathe bleed the brakes so this is actually a, a PV2 valve um, there's also a very similar looking valve called a PV4 uh, it's a General Motors product, but this is found on many aftermarket disc drum kits to convert drum drum cars to, to front disc rear drum, um, as it prevents the rears locking up before the fronts, which would make the car spin. Um, and also it's this, got this safety feature that if one circuit develops a huge leak, the shuttle valve will move across and block it off, um, so you've still got some stopping power left. So I hope you like this video, um, I hope it's useful to some of you, it just documents what I did, um, I'm, I'm no great expert compared to anybody else, um, it just, just documents my experience.